Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trent Foreman and today we're going to talk about surfboard construction and, and hopefully clear up the, any confusion that there may be in the different types of constructions and uh, what they're good for. We're going to be looking at three basic types of constructions. There's, there's far more uh, styles and types of constructions even in between these three, but these are three basic ones and uh, hopefully this will help you make the uh, right choice on your next surfboard. Uh, the three surfboard constructions that we're going to talk about are polyurethane, polyester construction. A lot of times you'll see that abbreviated PU poly. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about is, is EPS epoxy, which is what I'm holding right here. And then we're also going to talk about sandwich epoxy, which is the Channel Islands flyer there on the, uh, on the end of the line right there. So first, let's talk about PU poly, because that's the most uh, prominent surfboard construction out there. It's the one that probably everybody has surfed their entire life, or at least um, one of their boards. Uh, polyurethane foam with polyester resin and fiberglass. What these boards are the most common in the water. Uh, a lot of people have only surfed PU Poly and they're the most familiar with this construction. Not only how to take care of the board, but also how the board is going to perform under their feet and, and actually how it's going to feel under their feet. PU has some great characteristics as far as uh, carrying a lot of glide down the wave, uh, absorbing chop, and also uh, flexing so you can load the board and unload it in and out of your turns. Uh, if there's a drawback with this type of construction, it is that of these three, it's the most uh, fragile. So you have to definitely take care of the board and just have a spatial awareness, like when you're turning around really quick, not to slam it into a car or a door in your house. Uh, they ding the easiest, and over time, they will lose their, their flex uh, and tend to go flat, a little bit softer over time. Uh, you may still have a complete board that you can paddle and drop in on a wave, but it just won't feel as lively over time as some of the other boards that, that hold their flex and their response uh, for a longer period of time. So that's PU Poly, uh, very familiar, uh, very easy to go from board to board in your quiver. It'll absorb a little bit of vibration more than some of the other boards. And uh, also the, the pricing of those boards is generally a little bit more attractive because the materials are less expensive to produce. So that's PU or polyurethane with polyester resin. The next board we're going to talk about is a, uh, is a custom epoxy style board. And typically these boards uh, are EPS cores, and, uh, which is a different type of foam. And then you have epoxy resin. A lot of people will say, hey, I'm, looking at, I'm trying to decide between an epoxy board and a glass board. And where the mistake in there is that all boards have fiberglass. Um, the, the correct way to say it would be, I'm, hey, I'm looking at an epoxy board or a, or a polyester board. Um, and because that is describing the type of resin that's in the board. All boards have foam cores, they all have fiberglass. What differs uh, the majority of the time is the type of resin. So looking at this board, uh, this is an EPS blank uh, with epoxy resin and uh, fiberglass. Typically, these boards have a lot of the same characteristics of the PU Poly boards, but what they uh, add to that is more durability uh, against dinging and breaking, and then also a longer life as far as the flex and the response time and having the board feel lively and new. Uh, generally, they, they will last longer before they go flat. Uh, the custom EPS epoxy boards, they typically start out with a, a higher density core, so before you even fiberglass the boards, they'll have uh, more ding resistance even without fiberglass on them just because the cores are stiffer. And then uh, they're gonna put fiberglass and high, high quality uh, fiberglass on it with uh, epoxy resin. These boards, again, they're a little bit more resistant to dings. They last longer when, uh, when you're loading and unloading them. And then also a lot of the epoxy resins have more resistance to yellowing in the sun, so not only will they last longer dinging uh, and flex-wise, but they will not yellow as quickly as a polyester board. Good for somebody who wants to keep a board for a long time, have a high-performance product, and has a little bit of extra money to invest in it, uh, you will always get the money out of putting it into this style of board uh, over the long run. Some people have a fixed budget or they like the feel of poly better, that's why they go with poly. If you spend a little bit of extra money and you like the feel that these boards have, you get uh, longer life out of the board and it always comes back to you through uh, more sessions in the water. So that's the custom EPS epoxy. The next style of epoxy, and you know, hopefully talking about the epoxy is going to clear up the epoxy confusion because there's several different types of epoxy construction. The most prevalent uh, would be the custom EPS epoxy and then also sandwich epoxy. 
sandwich epoxy, the biggest difference is that these boards typically don't have a stringer down the center. Um, you're, they're working with an ultralight uh, bead foam pour, and then they're getting the strength of the board, not from the stringer down the middle, but from the shell around the outside. So they use high, uh, high density divinicel or high density foams around the outside of the board and the rails in the bottom, and that's where you're getting your strength from. And then they laminate everything together with epoxy resin and fiberglass. Uh, when they're finished with the board, you are, you're not going to be starting with a white blank, so you end up with a tan, tannish brownish color, which is what those foams are typically colored. Uh, so it looks like a boat basically coming out of a mold. Uh, and that is why you'll always see these boards with an external paint. So rather than having the graphics or the airbrush underneath the fiberglass, you're always going to see these boards have an external paint because the divinicel is hard to airbrush, it's hard to paint. And also when the board comes out, being that it's tan or brown, they want to put the paint on the outside. It's not a negative thing, it's just the materials that they're working with. Um, these boards have the highest level of ding resistance. Uh, and so for people who are prone to ding in their boards or live or just want a maintenance free product, uh, it's going to have the longest life and be the easiest to use, just maximum time fun, minimum time fixing your board. Uh, the drawback of them is a lot of times they don't have this, the flex that some surfers, like a more experienced surfer, is looking for. Uh, and that's why that type of surfer may be drawn towards a, a PU Poly or a custom EPS epoxy board. These boards uh, tend to work really well for somebody who's just going to be beating up their board and wants maximum durability or minimum maintenance. Just a really easy to use product uh, that's going to last a long, long time. You can have a board like this at the end of the year, strip the wax off, and it looks brand new. It never yellows, it never fades. Uh, and it's much more resistant to, uh, to dinging. So a lot of times you can drop these and nothing will happen to them where some of the other boards are going to have to fix them. So hopefully, uh, in just talking about these three basic constructions, it clears uh, some confusion up and, and helps you pick the right board. Again, the most important thing is none of these constructions is the best. It's just accurately looking at um, how you're going to use the board and what's important to you and then choosing the right technology to fit your needs. We'll see you uh, up in the real board loft after the next fall. Thanks for tuning in.